we're in the Michigan Theater, which opened in August of 1926. And you walk through this fire escape, through these stairs here. And what you walk out into is something that you won't find anywhere else in the world. What remains of the Michigan Theater, a movie palace in its time, is almost beyond astonishing. You can still see the lobby with its columns and mirrors in between them at their capitals, one, two, three of them, grimy and cracked, they still survive. And then turn around and in the auditorium, the intricate Italianate plasterwork ceiling is still hanging, or part of it is, supported by iron rods sunk into the brickwork behind it. You can see it's faded purple and beige. Maybe it was a rich gold colour once. But all around me, where I'm standing, there are cars, because shoved into this relic of a different Detroit is a three-storey car park. Above me, the birds have made their home inside the plasterwork. The whole building now is open to the elements. Dan Austin, author of Lost Detroit, what is this place? It's proof that the automobile can giveth and the automobile can taketh away. I mean, this place was built as Detroit became the auto capital of the world and was built to show how grand Detroit really was. But as Detroit's fortunes changed, so did the Michigan theaters. And, I mean, like I said, this is a piece of of Detroit ingenuity here. I mean, nowhere else in the world would they take a movie palace decked to the nines and say, you know what, that'd be a good spot for a parking garage, but really it was kind of a, out of necessity because they needed parking and nothing gobbles up history like parking. Detroit has changed. 